from around the globe, it's theCUBE, presenting Adaptive Data Governance. Brought to you by IO Tahoe. And we're back with the data automation series. In this episode, we're going to learn more about what IO Tahoe is doing in the field of adaptive data governance, how it can help achieve business outcomes and mitigate data security risks. I'm Lisa Martin and I'm joined by AJ Vahora, the CEO of IO Tahoe and Lester Waters, the CTO of IO Tahoe. Gentlemen, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you, Lisa, it's good to be back. Great to see you, Lisa. Likewise, very socially distant, of course, as we are. Lester, we're going to start with you. What's going on at IO Tahoe? What's new? Well, I've been with IO Tahoe for a little over the year. And one thing I've learned is every customer needs are just a bit different. So we've been working on our next major release of the IO Tahoe product uh, to really try to address these customer concerns because, you know, we want to, we want to be flexible enough in order to come in and, and not just profile the data, not just understand data quality and lineage, but also to address the unique needs of each and every customer that we have. And so that required a platform rewrite of our product so that we could uh, extend the product uh, without building a new version of the product. We wanted to be able to have pluggable modules. Uh, we also focused a lot on performance. Uh, it's very important with the bulk of data that we deal with that we're able to pass through that data in a single pass and do the analytics that are needed, whether it's uh, uh, lineage data quality or just identifying the underlying data. And we're incorporating all that we've learned. We're tuning up our machine learning. We're analyzing on more dimensions than we've ever done before. We're able to do data quality without doing uh, uh, an initial regex, for, for example, uh, just out of the box. So. I think it's all of these things are coming together to form our uh, our next version of our product and we're really excited by it. Sounds exciting. AJ, from the CEO's level, what's going on? Well, I think just building on that, what uh, Lester was just mentioning there, it's we're, we're growing pretty quickly with our partners and today here with Oracle, uh, we're excited to, to explain how that's shaping up. Um, Lots of collaboration already with Oracle in government, in insurance, and in banking. And, and we're excited because we get to, to have an impact. It's real satisfying to see uh, how we're able to help businesses transform and redefine what's possible with their data. And um, having Oracle there as a partner uh, to lean in with is, is definitely helping. Excellent, we're going to dig into that a little bit later. Lester, let's go back over to you. Explain adaptive data governance. Help us understand that. Really, adaptive data governance is about achieving business outcomes through automation. It's really also about establishing a data-driven culture and pushing what's traditionally managed in IT out to the, uh, to the business. And to do that, you've got to, you've got to, uh, you've got to enable an environment where people can actually access and look at the information about the data, not necessarily access the underlying data because we've got privacy concerns and so forth, but they need to understand what kind of data they have, what shape it's in, what's dependent on it upstream and downstream, and so that they can make their educated decisions on, uh, on what they need to do to achieve those business outcomes. A lot, of, a lot of frameworks these days are hardwired. So you can set up a set of business rules and that set of business rules works for a very specific database and a specific schema. But imagine a world where you could just say, you know, the start date of a loan must always be before the end date of a loan. And having that generic rule, regardless of the underlying database and applying it, even when a new database comes online and having those rules applied, that's what adaptive data governance is about. I like to think of it as the intersection of three circles. Really it's the technical metadata, coming together with policies and rules and coming together with the business ontologies that are, that are unique to that particular business. And this, all of this, bringing this all together allows you to enable rapid change in your environment. So it's, it's a mouthful, adaptive data governance, but uh, that's what it kind of comes down to. So AJ, help me understand this. Is, is this what enterprise companies are doing now or are they not quite there yet? Well, you know, Lisa, I think Every organization is, is going at its pace, but you know, markets are changing, the economy and the speed at which um, some of the changes in the economy are happening is, 
is compelling more businesses to look at being more digital in how they serve their own customers. Um, so what we're seeing is a number of trends here from uh, heads of data, chief data officers, CIO stepping back from a one size fits all approach because they've tried that before and it, it just hasn't worked. They've spent um, millions of dollars on IT programs trying to drive value from that data. And, been, and they've ended up with large teams of manual processing around data to try and hardwire these policies to fit with the context and each line of business. And, and that hasn't worked. So the trends that we're seeing emerge really relate to how do I, as a chief data officer, as a CIO, inject more automation into a lot of these common tasks and you know we've been able to to see that impact i think the news here is you know if you're trying to create a a knowledge graph a data catalog or a, a business glossary and you're trying to do that manually well stop you, you don't have to do that manually anymore i think um best example i can give is lester and i we we like chinese food and japanese food and if you were sitting there with your chopsticks you, you wouldn't eat a bowl of rice with the chopsticks one grain at a time what you'd want to do is to find a more productive way to to enjoy that meal before it gets cold and and that's similar to how we're able to help uh, organizations to digest their data is is to get through it faster enjoy the benefits of putting that data to work and if it was me eating that food with you guys, I would be not using chopsticks. I would be using a fork and probably a spoon. So, so Lester, how then does IO Tahoe go about doing this and enabling customers to achieve this? Let me uh, let me show you a little uh, story we have here. So, if you take a look at, at the challenges that most uh, customers have, they're very similar. But every customer is on a different data journey. So, but it all starts with what data do I have? What questions uh, or what shape is that data in? Um, how is it structured? What's dependent on it upstream and downstream? Um, what insights can I derive from that data? And how can I answer all of those questions automatically? So if you look at the challenges for these data professionals, you know they're either on a journey to the cloud, maybe they're doing a, a, uh, a migration to Oracle, maybe they're doing some data governance uh, changes, um, and it's about enabling this. So if you look at these challenges, and I'm going to take you through a story here, and I want to introduce Amanda. Amanda is not unlike uh, anyone in any large organization. She's looking around and she just sees stacks of data. I mean, different databases, the one she knows about, the one she doesn't know about, but should know about uh, various different kinds of databases. And a man is just tasking with understanding all of this so that they can embark on her data journey program. So, uh, so Amanda goes through and she's great. I've got some handy tools. I can start looking at these databases and getting an idea of what we've got. Well, as she digs into the databases, she starts to see that not everything is as clear as she might have hoped it would be. You know, property names uh, or column names or have ambiguous names like attribute one and attribute two, or maybe date one and date two. Uh, so Amanda's starting to struggle, even though she's got tools to visualize and look at uh, look at these databases, she still knows she's got a long road ahead. And with 2000 databases in her large enterprise, yes, it's gonna be a long journey. But Amanda's smart, so she pulls out her trusty spreadsheet to track all of her findings. And what she doesn't know about, she raises a ticket or maybe tries to track down the owner to find what the data means. And she's tracking all this information. Well, clearly this doesn't scale that well for Amanda. You know, so maybe the organization will get 10 Amandas to sort of divide and conquer her, that work. Uh, but even that doesn't work that well because there's still ambiguities in the data. With IO Tahoe, what we do is we actually profile the underlying data. So by looking at the underlying data, we can quickly see that attribute one looks very much like a US social security number. And attribute two uh, looks like a uh, ICD-10 medical code. And we do this by using ontologies and dictionaries and algorithms to help identify the underlying data and then tag it. Key to uh, doing uh, 
this automation is really being able to normalize things across different databases so that where there's differences in column names, I know that in fact they contain, contain the same data. And by going through this exercise with IO Tahoe, not only can we identify the data, but we also can gain insights about the data. So for example, we can see that 97% of that time, that column named attribute one that's got US social security numbers has something that looks like a social security number. But 3% of the time, it doesn't quite look right. Maybe there's a dash missing, maybe there's a, a digit dropped, or maybe there's even characters embedded in it. And so there may be, that may be indicative of a data quality issue. So we try to find those kind of things. Going a step further, we also try to identify um, data quality relationships. So for example, we have two columns, one date one, date two. Through uh, observation, we can see that date one 99% of the time is less than date two. 1% of the time it's not. Probably indicative of a data quality issue, but going a step further, we can also build a business rule that says date one is less than date two. And so then when it pops up again, uh, we can quickly identify and remediate that problem. So these are the kinds of things that, uh, that we can do with, with IO Tahoe. Going even a step further, you could take your, your favorite data science solution productionize it and incorporate it into our next version uh, as a, uh, what we call a worker process to do your own bespoke analytics. Bespoke analytics, excellent Lester, thank you. So AJ, talk us through some examples of where you're putting this to use and also what is some of the feedback from some customers? Yeah, what, um, well, I think it helped do this, bring it to life a little bit, Lisa, is just to talk through a case study. We um, we pulled something together, I, I know it's available for download, but in a, a well-known telecommunications media company, they they had a lot of the issues that Lester just spoke about, lots of teams of Amandas, um, super bright data practitioners, um, and I'm really looking to, to get more productivity out of their day and, and deliver a good result for their own customers, for, um, cell phone subscribers um, and, and broadband users. So, you know, some of the examples that we can see here is how we went about auto-generating a lot of that understanding of that data within hours. So Amanda had her data catalog populated automatically, a business glossary built up, and could really then start to see, okay, where do I want to apply some policies to the data to, to set in place some controls, whether I want to adapt how different lines of business, maybe tax versus customer operations, have different access or permissions to that data. And what we've been able to do there is, is to build up that picture to see how does data move across the entire organization, across the state and and monitor that over time for improvement. So we've taken it from being a reactive, let's do something to, to fix something to now more proactive. We can see what's happening with our data, who's using it, who's accessing it, uh, how it's being used, how it's being combined. Um, and from there, taking a proactive approach is a real smart use of, of the, uh, the talents in, in that telco organization and, and the folks that work there with data. Okay, AJ, so dig into that a little bit deeper. And one of the things I was thinking when you were talking through some of those outcomes that you're helping customers achieve is ROI. How do customers measure ROI? What are they seeing with IO Tahoe solution? Yeah, right now, the, the big ticket item is time to value. And I think in data, um, a lot of the upfront investment costs are quite expensive. They have been today with a lot of the larger um, vendors and technologies. So what a CIO, an economic buyer really needs to be certain of is how quickly can I get that ROI? Um, I think we've got something we can show, just pull up a before and after. And it really comes down to hours, days and weeks. Um, where we've been able to have that impact. And in this playbook that we pulled together, the before and after picture, 
really shows you know those savings that can be delivered through um, providing data into some actionable form within hours and days to to drive agility but at the same time being able to enforce the controls to protect the use of that data who has access to it so Lisa the number one thing I'd have to say is time and, and we can see that on the the graphic that we've just pulled up here excellent so ostensible measurable outcomes that time to value we talk about achieving adaptive data governance. Lester, you guys talk about automation, you talk about machine learning. How are you seeing those technologies being a facilitator of organizations ad adopting adaptive data governance? Well, uh, as we see, the manual day, the days of manual effort are out. So I think, you know, this is a multi-step process, but the very first step is understanding what you have and normalizing that across your data estate. So you couple this with the ontologies that are that are unique to your business areas and algorithms, and you basically go across and you identify and tag tag that data. That allows for the next steps to happen. So now I can write business rules, not in terms of, of columns, uh, named columns, but I can write them in terms of the tags. Using that automated pattern recognition where we look, where we observe that the loan start should be before the loan. Being able to automate that is a huge time saver. And the fact that we can suggest that as a rule, rather than waiting for a person to come along and say, oh, wow, okay, I need this rule, I need this rule. These are steps that are increased that, uh, or I should say decrease that time to value that AJ uh, talked about. And then lastly, you couple machine learning, because even with, even with great automation and being able to profile all of your data and getting a good understanding, that brings you to a certain point. But there's still ambiguities in the data. So for example, I might have two columns, date one and date two. I may have even observed that date one should be less than date two, but I don't really know what date one and date two are other than a date. So this is where it comes in and I might ask the user say, can you help me identify what date one and date two are in this, in this table? Turns out there's a start date and an end date for a loan. That gets remembered, cycled into the machine learning. So if I start to see this pattern of date one, date two elsewhere, I'm going to say, is it start date and end date? And these bringing all these things together with this all this automation is really what's key to enabling this uh, this uh, data governance, your data Excellent. governance program. Great, thanks Lester. And AJ, I want to wrap things up with something that you mentioned in mm. the beginning about what you guys are doing with Oracle. Take us out by telling us what you're doing there. How are you guys working together? Yeah, I think those of us who've worked in IT for many years, we've, we've learned to, to trust Oracle's technology. They're, they're shifting now to a, a hybrid on-prem cloud generation two platform, which is exciting and and their existing customers and new customers moving to Oracle uh, on a journey. So, so Oracle came to us and said, you know, we can see how quickly you're able to help us change mindsets. And those mindsets are locked in a way of thinking around operating models of IT that, that are maybe not agile and more siloed. And, and they're wanting to break free of that and adopt a more agile API uh, driven approach uh, with their data. So a lot of the um, a lot of the work that we're doing with Oracle is around uh, accelerating what customers can do with understanding their data and to build digital apps by identifying the, the underlying data that has value. And uh, the time we're able to do that in, in, in hours, days and weeks, rather than many months, is opening up the eyes to chief data officers, CIOs to say, well, maybe we can do this whole digital transformation this year. Maybe we can bring that forward and, and transform who we are as a company. Um, and that's driving innovation, which we're excited about. And I know Oracle uh, are keen to, to drive through. And helping businesses transform digitally is so incredibly important in this time as we look to things changing in 2021. AJ Lester, thank you so much for joining me on this segment, explaining adaptive data governance, how organizations can use it, benefit from it, and achieve ROI. Thanks so much, guys. 
Thank you. Thanks again, Lisa.